today we're going to celebrate the Most High. It's been so wonderful to us. And our test is going to be taken from Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. And I'm taking the entire chapter, chapter 3, but I just want to take a fraction of that. Beginning from verse 16. Daniel chapter 3. I am reading from the New Living Translation. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16. To 26. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. And even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you have set up. Verse 19. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shedra, Mesha, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. I'm reading New Living Translation. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men on his army to burn Shedra, Mesha, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king, in his anger, had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men into it. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego securely tied fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly, but suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound, walking around in the, in the uh, fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of God. The last verse. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach! Meshach and Abednego, servants of the Most High, come, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Let us pray. Eternal King of Glory, we want to thank you for today. Lord, this day is yours. You gave it to us from the beginning. But well, now, Father, we're returning unto you. Gain control. This is the hour you have promised your children that you are going to do a new thing. The hour has come. Set at liberty all of us that are in chain. Set at liberty all of us that are blinded. Set at liberty today. Those of us that, Father, hitherto we have cried and cried and cried. Today is your set time. Manifest your glory. Intervene on our situation. And let there be a testimony of joy in every home today. 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. By caption, I caption the message today, the God moment. The God moment. Why I was preparing, I encountered uh, one publication magazine they call Reader's Digest. I don't know how many of us are used to that. Reader's Digest, okay. This edition was 1973. I'm sorry to, don't tell me it's not in your record. In 1973, a representative of a gas company just found a beautiful home just built, magnificent building. Very expensive, luxurious house. What, they wanted to come and commission the heater the, so that when the winter will come, they will enjoy the warmth that the heater will provide and all the rest. They wanted to come and commission and calibrate and configure it for the new assignment for the equipment. The owner of the house called back and said, no, you don't need to come. I, I, no. Our engineers are well trained. They were part of those who commissioned this machine all the time. Without them, you will not enjoy the ones you require of it, not the cold during summer. No, 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 no. The owner said, when your technician will come, they will see the one I put at the door, at the entrance door. They will think it is, is a caricature. The owner, I am the owner, I know where the original is. The owner of the house knew where the thermostat is kept. He kept the caricature at the door so that the children would play and, 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 and manhandle it and rough handle it and will think they are controlling the heat of the house. In this case, the thermostat, the owner knows where he kept it. And it's only the owner that can operate it and configure it. One of the TV expert um, evangelists, Warren by name, noted that when God permits his children to go through furnace, he keeps his eye he keeps his, his, his eye on the clock and his hand on the thermostat. God knows where the real thermostat is. The story in chapter 3 of Daniel is one of the most told of all the stories in the Bible, which includes the shower, the, the sower, and all the rest. Most of us who went through Sunday school, children's Sunday school, we know the story by heart. And we keep close to it as if we are Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. We know it so much. But today, I want to consider something that very many of us might have ignored. I know some, to some of us, we'll be reminding them. I'm going through this. I'm so happy because our father is here. Once your father is around, you can jump through the roof, you know that. The first is that one, this story you have heard, recorded in Daniel chapter 3, is real. It is not a made-up story. How do I know? I, said, I did some search. And record books demonstrated that it was so real. And besides... Our God wouldn't have allowed such a lie in a treasured holy book for us, knowing that we will believe it. And he doesn't reward anybody who believes in a lie. He wouldn't have. We're not giving much detail about the 90 feet tall golden statue. But many scholars believe that the, gold, the, the, the structure was covered with a shield of golden, a golden shield. But besides that, there have been records of those of some people who are building structures 
What did they do this to do? They built these structures to honor, to demonstrate their devotion to their gods. So our story is based on actual behavior of the community of people at that time. The story is surreal. The statue was erected deliberately, one, to honor Nebuchadnezzar's devotion to idolatry. The next thing we want to understand about this is it's a huge statue. And it's not a mere idol. It's not a, a, an idol at a corner. It's an idol built by who? The emperor named Nebuchadnezzar. It's not a common one that anybody can just push aside. No. It's an idol built by the, um, the king, the emperor, the highest officer in the land. Notice how personally the king was involved in this statue. He commanded a certain rhythm, music had to be played. At that time, you must bow in worship. I remembered in those days, some of us who have been a little bit up, maybe young adults, when a martial music is played on the radio. How many of us have heard about martial music before? <laughs> you don't need to be told what has happened. We remember that. You don't need to be told what has happened. That is exactly the command of the King Nebuchadnezzar. When that music is played, every no human must bow. Apparently, Nebuchadnezzar thought maybe that could have been stubborn gold. People who are so stubborn. And he added to it. You don't, that's the cost you are going to pay. If you don't bow, you are going to pay a cost. <laughs> that cost is not in dollar. The price to be paid, it will cost you something to refuse paganism. It will cost you something to refuse paganism. This wasn't anymore about the idol. It was about the king and his desire, his desire to force his value, to force his value system on his people, to compel the people, not ordinarily to accept and work his own value system, but to make sure that no one is spared from his own value system. It is like what is happening today. You don't accept homosexuality, homosexuality, you will accept gay marriage. You accept cannabis, cannabis use. I thank God for our doctors last week. Sister Oweye, you are wonderful. I have not seen others. Dr. Bissell uh, Oweye, they were exceptional. You will not accept transvesty. You will not accept immorality. In fact, I was, I was told recently somebody, I don't know whether I mentioned, I mentioned to our pastor some time ago. I was in the US. I was. My, I was with my host, a minister in the church, and they announced that their pastor was going to wed. And there was no jubilation. There was no excitement. And then my host took me, and we were going back home. I said, sir, you say you're an assistant pastor. So he said, yes. What is happening that uh, they announced the pastor is wedding? There will be some shouting. No shouting at all. The man looked at me on the face and said, my friend, Sam, I'm not going there. I'm not going to participate in that wedding. What happened? He said, that is his eighth wedding. Then I said, ah, sorry. Eighth wedding? Oh, what is, what is sad, man. How could these ladies be dying on his hand? 
I said, will you stop that? All of them are alive. Some with two children, some with one. Divorce is the vogue now. You do anything you want. Worship my paganism. Worship my idol. You don't, it's at a cost. Uh, our father is here. I want to tell a lie against him. So I'm happy he's present. There was one day he was just curious. He said, I'm just praying that they will not ask us now to conduct a wedding between a man and a snake. Because they are proven in the system. Hmm. And so everyone bows down. It is not worth the hustle. And they don't want to pay that kind of price by saying no. Everyone in Babylon bow down. Everyone except this notorious three. The good boys from Judah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now there is a people there. What is in them that make them thick? What was in them that makes a call for a difference? I want to bless God for my past, my bishop, uh, Shore, this morning. It's as if I have briefed her. And I never did. And I have, uh, Father and the Lord mentioned it. That is the work of the Holy Spirit, confirming that there's somebody who needs this message here today. I believe it is mine, but I thought otherwise when I was preparing this. Years ago, in God's own country, when technical supplies are made to uh, a warehouse, there's a holding warehouse before they were accepted and the process of payments are made. That was an unfortunate uh, event that happened. I was made to lead a team of engineers to inspect this. And I went with my vernier calipers, screw gauge. How many of us know vernier calipers here? <laughs> screw gauge. Oh, God bless you. I'm sorry, they are technical jargons, equipment that we use. And I was going there with this team of engineers. After working for two and a half weeks, we finished everything. Before my report, got to my boss. The director called my boss that send that boy out. My report was not out yet. 100% have been rejected. None met the gauge. They just put the grease around them, and normally it will just be recycled and will waste all the money and the resources. That is not where I'm going. Do you know when I continued the report, one of my friends came to me, very close friend. We were going to the same church. He said, What others are doing? Why don't you do it and keep quiet? You lose your job. What are they doing? Just close your eyes, sign the LPO. I will call the LPO, look who purchase orders. Just sign. Some of them collect their cuts. There was one letter of transfer given to me. I was about to close my shift when I was advised that tomorrow when you wake up, report to the store refinery over 120 miles away. That night, I had no briefcase. I had to move because I could not be mortgaged. In the same way, my friends were doing that so as to save me and save my family from joblessness. They thought, only once, what others have been doing? Let's do it and forget about it so that uh, you don't face the siege of a sack. Only God knows the extent of pressure Shadrach and Meshach faced by refusing to bow. And let me tell you, you are not spared today. Sexual sin, you are not spared today. No, not one. You'll be advised. 
to obey, worship their paganism and have it done. The hour has come. But with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it was a good moment. This was a time when I believe God was setting them up. He was putting those boys in a position where they had to make a choice. And let me tell you, each one of you here hearing my voice today, you are going to, if you have not had several, you are going to have your own. Where you have to make a choice. My dollar, my job, or my creator. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had that confrontation. God's moment. Yes. I didn't have the opportunity you people have. And I thank God for my children. Up to now, they have their parents with them. God bless them. <laughs> I was 14 when my mother left. It was as if my, my dad was running a relay race with her. With her. Before I could say Jack Robinson was there, gone. For the last 42 years, I've been confronted with God moment of divide. I can't describe them, various forms. Your God moment will test your faith. Your God moment will test your resolve. Will tell you your God is not real. Your God moment will, your God moment will tell you indeed, you are not alive, you are dead. Your resolve will be tested. Your promotions will be challenged. There are several God moments in the scriptures. Abraham, having waited for a hundred years, he was confronted with his God moments. What was it? That's all he has waited for for 100 years. Was invited, oh, take that. That boy you are love. How you've been waiting for it. Go and kill him. Because of that, he became the father of faith to date. For every God moment in your life, if you allow God to come and manifest his glory, his faithfulness, let me tell you, God will not deny you your reward. That's a reward attached to each God moment. David was not spared. David was, was not a soldier. He was not expected to be where he was. A number of us are going to have something. You are not expected to be there, but you are. That could be your own God moment. He brought supplies, provisions for his brothers, senior, who are soldiers, trained. And when he had the abuse of an ignorant giant, ignorant of who God is, I was telling the soldiers who have been trained for years. And those ones were glued. Some of them were, <laughs> according to the word of my children, they were wee wee in their pants. They could not say a word. Day in, day out. For 40 days and 40 nights before David got there. And you know the story? Goliath lost, and God won. Job had his own God moment. To the extent that his wife walked on to me, look, deny this your God. Do you know that most of the God moments is only one statement that runs through all of them? Deny your God. Deny your resolve. Ignore your belief. Ah, never take time to your teachings. Don't observe the cancer you receive. Ignore them. They are stupid. Job received the same thing. To the extent that his, God, his wife told him, look, deny this your God and forget about the trash man. Esther's time came. 
She had to declare, if I perish, I perish. It's a good moment. Did she perish? No. Joseph had his own. And though he landed in the prison, he escaped bowing down to their paganism. Daniel himself was not spared. He has been praying and praying. They know he's a prayer warrior. Remy, <laughs> be careful. <laughs> he's a prayer warrior. Once he climbs the mountain, all, man, all uh, uh, gates will be opened. You will not suffer from any block gates anymore. Oh, that in the Lord led us to a seven-day prayer here. I don't know what you experienced, though. From then, I've been enjoying open gate. Sir, we request for more seven days. Please don't travel. Give us another seven days. <laughs> God bless you, sir. This is God's moment. Now, what about Peter? Peter, in Mark, chapter 14, Verses 66 to 71. Do you know a maid confronted Peter? You know, I, are you mad? I don't know him. Not once, not twice. Daddy Joe told us a story some time ago. He said, he said, there was a sister in the church. Her father in the Lord decided to go and visit her in the office. At the reception, I'm looking for a sister. I won't mention anybody's name because I don't know who bears such a name here. At the reception, he said, you call her sister? If she is a sister in your church. I won't come to your church again. God moment. That brings me back to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They faced with a harsh, very harsh decision. A time when God set them up and they needed to stand. They have been trained from their home from Judah, that there is no any other God apart from the Almighty God. Don't worship any other God bowing down to an idol made by Nebuchadnezzar, even if it's caricature of Nebuchadnezzar, or Nebuchadnezzar crept himself inside and made himself an idol to be worshipped. Don't. Do you know, many of us have forgotten what our parents told us. Somebody is hearing me today. You are doing exactly opposite what your dad, your mom told you to do here in Canada. It's a free land. They are not here. But let me remind you, the most high God is here. He put those words on the lips of your parents then before your departure. And you think because they are absent today, you're free from them. No. The Lord is watching his word to perform. And if you will obey, he will perform it on your behalf. Are you ready for him? <clears throat> now, how does this one apply to a lot of us here? When it comes down to how to answer the question that Nebuchadnezzar asked Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who is the God who would deliver you out of my hand? That is a compelling question that each one of us 
must take count and be ready to answer when our God moments come. The question was the center of the entire story. How Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the question was the focus of, the, of this whole behavior that you read concerning these three boys. Who is the God who will deliver you? Is it the, uh, is it the almighty God? How would Nebuchadnezzar know? How the propaganda supporters of homosexuality know? How will those people anchoring or marijuana use? No. Cannabis now be available for you under control, under check, to release your pain and all the rest. In spite of the control, how will they know? How will they know that your God is the Almighty? What is the response to that question? Do you believe <clears throat> that our God is mighty to save? Do you still believe that he is the judge Jehovah? Do you believe that he can do anything that will be for your good and to prosper you? I pray you do. I pray you do. Because if you don't, Satan has won. You immediately become a prey to every manipulation, every attack, every token, the peace of hell could launch against you. But the essence of today is that you will no longer be a victim. You will no longer be a prey. You come taught. This month is a month of open gate. Whichever the gate that has been blocked, has been locked against your progress, a give of promotion, your employment, your marriages, your home, your children, your parents, and all, shall be broken open. Amen. Now I want to conclude. Lastly, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, the first five verses. I love this time around uh, New Living Translation. <clears throat> that passage reported an encounter between Peter and John and a crippled beggar at a beautiful gate. The only request that Peter made, he looked at the, at the, at the crippled. He said, look at us. Look at us. Take away your focus on men. Take away your gaze on your past. Close the chapter of your past. As I yesterday, close that chapter. Focus on the Lord Jesus. Fix your gaze on Jesus. Look at me. Enough of the pain, the agony you will go through on your crippled life. Your inability to move. Your inability. Stop your inabilities. Focus on the abilities of God. Focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at me. Look at us. That was a God moment for that cripple. And the obedience to that simple command, that demand, Change the entire history. We never knew the, his name. Only God knew him. Do you know that is what God is asking somebody here today? If you will now shift your focus away from your past, the disappointment you have suffered, that was another one at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. He was before the creator of the universe, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
What can I do for you? He was complaining about his cousins and brothers. They failed me. They abandoned me here. They don't like me. In fact, I am the most hated. That's why they didn't stay with me. That was not the question they asked you. That is not the question. You are giving answers to questions not asked. Focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Your past, your, you've been dwelling on your past for so long. Oh, he slapped me yesterday. Oh, yes, he told me a lie 10 years ago. Oh, yes, he deceived me 15 years ago. Oh, yes, he, he was part of the armed robbers that killed my father 37 years ago. Oh. Look unto Jesus. <clears throat> During the Holy Ghost, special Holy Ghost service, the video said, the clothes some people were wearing there had been anointed. Our Father and the Lord is here. His clothes is the same clothes. We better look at him today. You're on your own if you don't. Don't tear his clothes. You make sure you look at it. The Lord your God says, look at me. Focus on me. I will help you. I will help you. Not the person, not individual. I know the plans that I have for you. The plan that I have is to prosper you and to take you to where? An expectation that is ahead of you. It is not an expectation that is in your past. No, an expectation cannot be no longer in your past, but ahead of you. To prosper you and take you to an expected end. Let us rise. It's not life for you and with the Lord God. Speak to him. Speak to God now. Father, I'm here with you. I have failed you in the several God moments I have gone through. I have chosen the dollar. I have chosen the man. I have chosen the system's mechanism against your name. Father, look at my past and forgive me. Set me now at the feet where you desire of me. Lord, I have dwelt among all the people who desire my presence and support, and I have bowed to their God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused. I thought by bowing, I was obeying you. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Set my feet now on the roadmap you have planned for me. Because it's yours to prosper me. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Why all of us are crying, I am crying, Father. Do not pass me by. Pass. Me not to gentle say, Hear.